we begin with a driver who's about to have a very bad day. It starts off just like any other drop. The driver arrives at the customer's location to drop a container. At the location, this driver is busy scheduling his next series of pickups and drop-offs. He exits the cab to prepare to drop the container. As he's on his cell phone, someone drives up and unbeknownst to him, parks right behind the rear of his container. The driver continues his conversation and then begins to drop the container. What are you doing? Look at my car! I didn't see you parked there. I didn't even know. What do you want me to do? And this just begins his day of misery. Oh my goodness. I think I'm going to be a little late. I did something not good. It's important to be aware of all the areas surrounding your container. And keep your eyes on the container as you're dropping it to prevent incidents like this from happening to you. We're about to go through an interactive scenario of securing a container to a trailer. This is only one possible method out of many. Please check your local vehicle codes to determine best practices and regulations in your area. The first step before picking up any container is to open the container doors and inspect the interior. Then make sure you secure the doors and lock them, preventing them from opening up and smashing into anything as you drive away. There are many ways to get a container onto a trailer bed, but there is one rule that pertains to all of them. Make sure that the area surrounding your container is clear. If using a forklift to place the container, be sure the blind side that's opposite of the forklift is clear of cars, people, or anything that could possibly be damaged or hurt if something goes wrong while loading this container. Now let's begin. What should the driver do after the container is safely on the trailer bed? One. Complete and sign all paperwork. Two, tie down rear with chains. Three, confirm that the container is flush with a forward chalk stop. The answer is three, confirm that the container is flush with a forward chalk stop. To help us understand some of the safety issues is 2007 NPSA Chairman of the Board, Phil Herden of Container Solutions. Now this is the forward stop for the container. And it's important to have the container set up firmly against that before you actually secure it to the trailer. And the benefit is that if there's any stop, any sudden impact, this will be your safeguard against the container moving ahead too fast or breaking loose from the trailer. It is always important to remember to secure the container to the front of the trailer, whether using these types of stops, pins and locks, or chains and hooks. What should the driver do next? One, check for foreign objects on top of the container. Two, chain off the rear of the container. Three, strap the container to the trailer bed. The answer is three, strap the container to the trailer bed. Yeah, Steve's strapping this, uh, this container down and for a 40 footer, footer he'll put uh, three straps on we were, he and I were discussing earlier, this, these rules vary by state, but uh, this meets the federal highway requirements. Steve's already secured the, uh, the strap on the other side, and, and uh, he'll use the winch on this side for all three. You notice he puts a uh, single twist. That keeps the strap from actually flapping against the side of the container as he's going down the highway. Steve is, uh, is securing the straps on this, these containers, and this container and the uh, First thing he's always sure of is to make sure the container is properly positioned. Make sure that it's flat onto the uh, trailer, that tightens them all, and then go back and do a double check before he heads out. Double check is important because when he's tightening one strap, he may actually end up creating something that loosens another strap. So he's going to double check all the straps. What should you do next? One, drive away with the container. Two. Secure the rear of the container with chains. Or three, inspect the inside of the container. The answer is two, 
secure the rear of the container with chains. You answered correctly if you said the next step is to chain down the container. Steve? So Steve is, uh, Steve is chaining up the rear of this container and uh, the highway rules provide that the container is supposed to be secured in such a way that it can't move, it's restrained from moving forward, from moving back, from moving up, down, and sideways. So this is really the final element, restraining it from moving back. Yeah, I know this seems time consuming and, and um, there are different steps that you need to be careful and make sure you complete when you're securing the container to the trailer. But it's about safety, it's about good condition operating of the equipment, it's about being aware of how to use things properly and ultimately we're not in too much of a hurry to do it right. What should the driver do after the chain has secured the rear of the container? One, call ahead to recheck destination of this container. Two, secure the rear chains with a binder. Or three, tie the doors together with rope. The answer is two, secure the rear with the binder. So Steve secured the chain at each end on both sides of the rail and, and, and through the chalk back here. And now he's gonna go ahead and put the binder on and that's gonna actually tighten both sides so, they're secure, so that these corner castings are secure to the trailer. Steve's gonna secure the, uh, the, the uh, chain here with the binder. And you wanna have that snap, that means that you've got a good tight lock with the binder. What should the driver do next? One, drive away. Two, place the binder in proper storage. Three, check for objects on top of container and on trailer bed. The answer is three, check for objects on top of the container and on the trailer bed. Yeah, this is a twist lock and what it's designed to do is connect two containers together. Normally used on a ship, and um, it's not unusual to find one of these on a container roof, left there by the terminal or left by a yard that might use them for stacking. The other one is it's not unusual for someone to set it, like right here on a truck, and for a driver not to see it. This thing can be a missile through somebody's windshield. So now the container is secure on the trailer. Interesting, you'll also need to use your mind. I, I recall a situation where a container door wasn't latched, the driver pulled forward, the door swung open, actually hit someone from behind. In summary, remember to always check and recheck the area surrounding your container prior to loading or unloading. Make sure you've inspected the container and make sure the doors are closed. We know that your approach and that of your company may vary from the sequence we just showed you. But the point is to always keep the safety of you and others in mind when loading and unloading containers. And we at the NPSA hope that this short exercise helped to remind you to check and recheck when loading a container onto the trailer. If you have any questions, please contact your NPSA member for more information. Mm -hmm.